All right, all right. Welcome one, welcome all. Uh, my name is Keegan Cotton. I am the Director of Technical Program Management here at Guesty. If you've joined our webinars before, uh, my title's changed a little bit. Previously, I was overseeing our customer success department, uh, and now we've started a new department that's really focused on the tech use case and tech troubleshooting of our Guesty users. We've found that just over time, as Guesty has continued to get more and more complex as a PMS and adding more and more functionalities, uh, it kind of becomes too much for one client to even really handle on their own own or one CSM. So my team has come in here to kind of be that, that advisor on the technical side, which fits very well with our topic today about AI-driven technology. Uh, joining me as well, is uh, an incredible, incredible uh, industry leader or thought leader, as I would as I would put him. Uh, Francois Guello uh, is with us in the house today. So thank you, Francois, for joining us. Um, we you. are anticipating to have Xavier Cardenas from Welcome.Travel, a property management company based out of Colombia, joining us today. It looks like he might be having some trouble calling in. So if we get to his section and he hasn't come up, no worries. We'll just adjust live and jump into the panel with me and Francois uh, to go a little bit more deep, deeper into some of these questions about AI. But either way, it'll be a good time. <laughs> All right. So before we go into our uh, our topic here, just a quick overview of what is Guesty, where are we in the industry, and you know how 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 have we come to be the the people having this webinar today? So. Guess he's been around uh, for just over 10 years. We've secured over 300 plus million dollars in funding. We've got 15 offices worldwide at this point from anywhere from the Philippines to Israel, to the Ukraine, to the United States, uh, to Portugal, we're all over. And we've got customers in 80 countries as we do wanna continue being a global entity as time moves on. So as a, a brief overview of what this presentation is going to look like, like I said, this might change depending on if Xavier comes in or not, but we'll go ahead and start with a quick couple of intro words from me with some data points from the summer, uh, as well as a formal introduction to the Guesty AI suite. So the full role of all the AI tech that Guesty has been working on in the past year or so uh, to bring to our customers. Then we'll jump over to Francois, who will be talking about Enzo Connect, kind of the uh, the more nuts and bolts of AI in general, and kind of where we are as a as a culture and society as it pertains to AI uh, in terms of adopting new technology, which is really interesting stuff. Um, and then. With Xavier, we'll be going into specific action items and specific use cases of AI that Xavier uses with his business today um, as recommendations for what you can do today on your end or just things to consider. And then lastly, of course, we'll have our panel discussion. So quick overview about uh, Guesty, just to be sure we're informed about the conversations today that we're having. Usually this is more relevant to different specific uh, functionalities that we're speaking to. Are they in our Guesty Light Pro or are they in are they in our Guesty Light product or are they in our Guesty Pro product? But just so you're aware of, depending on who you are in the audience, Guesty is uh, is built to fit different use cases. Whether you're someone who's just getting started or kind of hustling on the side with one to three listings, we have our Light product that's a great fit. If you're someone who's gearing up, growing, scaling, finding your, your own journey and building your own business, we have the Guesty Pro program that allows you to gain full access to all of our dashboard capabilities and... Um, then lastly, we have our enterprise product, which allows you to build with Guesty and, and kind of continue to flesh out your use case thereafter. All right, so enough enough, enough Guesty talk now. <laughs> we'll go ahead into some data findings here, uh, which initially we were looking coming into summer 2024 and things were kind of heating up. We were seeing higher numbers and we were a little more bullish on the summer of 24 compared to last year. But coming out the other end, what we're finding is that we found it's an overall plateau in booking trends across the US, EMEA, and around the world. So the global summer season booking volumes averaged pretty much virtually the same as they were during the same period in 2023. Um, the US, we saw a slight decrease of 3.5%, and EMEA, a slight increase of 1.9% in booking volumes. Nothing too major here, but what we know as property managers, this is not just about the booking volume, right? There's a lot more going on here. So we want to take a look as well at average nightly rate. 
across the globe. And this is where some trends start becoming a lot, a lot clearer of what's going on here. Um, so globally, we saw a pretty significant decrease of 16% in average nightly rates compared to 2023. And while the US saw an even larger 28% decrease, EMEA uh, actually showed a 20.5% increase. So a couple of things can be going on here. One, obviously, we had the Paris Olympics in EMEA that likely drove up those average nightly rates pretty significantly uh, for that time frame. But also, we're seeing what's going on economically in these countries and where the spending habits of guests are as of today. Where in the US, as the market is continuing to get saturated, in order to secure the same number of reservations, the rates are having to go lower because people's spending is more stretched right now. So it's actually a much more competitive environment as a result of that. And it comes down to volume. How many, how many reservations are you able to push as effectively as possible? And what helps you process reservations as effectively as possible? Better than technology, AI, and automation. Great job, Keegan. We tied it all together. All right. <laughs> so then, as part of as part of prepping for this webinar, we wanted to be sure we weren't just coming in and being like, "Here's what we think about AI," and you should listen to us because AI is important to everyone. We wanted to understand where where is where is the market as of today in property management companies responding to AI technologies. So we sent out a survey to get a better understanding of different angles of how the uh, the property management industry is responding right now. So. In this case, we had 302 respondents respond, and we asked how many of you have started implementing AI tools. 52% indicated they have started using this, 44% don't yet use it, and 4% don't know, uh, which, you know, we've all been there. <laughs> but this is really showing us an interesting snapshot of where we're at in the overall adoption process of these tools, which is something that Francois will be getting into in his presentation. Because um, you may say, you may be thinking, is this going to change over time? Is this going to shift where it goes to 100% of people are adopting? Or is this just some fad that's going to pass and actually that 52 percent is going to decrease over time. This is kind of our starting point as of today, uh, and we'll keep seeing how this goes across the industry. Now, even more specifically, I, I don't just want to know, you know, are people using AI or not? I want to know specifically what tools are they utilizing? So when looking at how these participants are using AI, most people said it's dynamic pricing, right? Whether it's Guesty's uh, price optimizer tool or a third-party tool like Beyond Pricing, Price Labs, Wheelhouse, etc. Um, that's that's usually the typical use case we're seeing. But 33% added that they are also using it for guest communications and 23% for content creation, such as listing descriptions, blogs, or social media for SEO, things of that nature. So who is using uh, AI in, in this industry? Right now, we're saying that 58% of property managers are, are the people that are using these AI tools and 49% are property owners. A lot of times this, this can happen in, in any industry where you have a managed commodity. The person who owns the commodity gets really excited about new technology and is looking for ways to like kind of help out that management aspect. And the PM is obviously like, well, I this is me, right? So everyone's kind of in the game trying to understand how can these tools be used to enrich our flows and uh, increase our profits rather than causing operational headaches. All right. Looks like we've got Xavier in the building too. Welcome, welcome. Perfect. All right. Continuing on here. We also want to understand, all right, so people are adopting AI, but is it working? Are people indicating that this is helpful to them? So we wanted to understand how much time are Average in a week. Uh, and from the report, we're seeing it's pretty evenly spread. 35% one to two hours, 23 at three to four, 22 greater than five hours, 20% aren't sure. So that's actually a really high percent of not sure compared to the, the previous uh, instance where people were asking, are you using AI tools? And that's that's another key component here is, is uh, something that I think Xavier will talk about in his presentation is how do you ensure when you're assessing AI tooling that it's actually going to save you time and therefore it's worth any additional cost that you're bringing in. Um, Xavier breaks down a good, a good balance between the human side and the AI side. And one of those components that comes into that consideration is the cost of either one of those, um, either one of those flows. All righty. So <clears throat> that's kind of where we're at today. We'll be releasing a full report uh, that we'll share with our customers 
with the results of that entire survey. Uh, but just wanted to give you guys a little teaser for the time being. So let's talk about the specific AI tools that Guesty users can take advantage of to improve efficiency and customer experience in their property management operations today. So let's talk about the AI suite, including Review Smart AI, our AI website assistant for Guesty's website builder, and Reply AI. I'm not going to discuss Guesty Price Optimizer, like I mentioned earlier, that runs on AI-powered dynamic pricing algorithms in this webinar. But if you're interested, I totally recommend checking out our website. We actually found we offer a one-month trial uh, for that functionality, and we found that 80% of customers who use that one-month trial continue to use Guesty Price Optimizer thereafter, um, which is just incredible from a data standpoint, to be honest. Uh, so I recommend it to anyone I can when I get the chance. All right, let's start with Review Smart AI. So how does it work, right? Well, what are we talking about here? It's an AI analytics tool that categorizes negative reviews into key areas uh, like noise, cleanliness, et cetera, to allow you to dive into those categories and even deeper subcategories to understand what is going on that could potentially be leading to a non-five-star experience for your guests and how can you easily get to understand what is that actionable insight and how can you do it? So how does it work? A single review can be in more than one category. Like I mentioned, noise, cleanliness, amenities, check-in, expectations, communication. These are all mapped from the Airbnb quality standards, booking.com, Verbo, just what we see in the industry in general. Uh, the AI further categorizes the reviews into subcategories to provide even more insight to why the guest wasn't satisfied. If the complaint doesn't fit into any subcategories, it'll go under an other subcategory. So there is like a fail safe at the end of the day. So what are the benefits for you? Why does this matter? Why would we want to categorize these reviews? So it really allows you to quickly identify the issue. You're not having to do any of the thinking here, the reading of the reviews, the processing, the action item, the deduction. You're able to just get the insights straight up from the go. Providing detailed analysis through these subcategories, you'll be able to get those more granular insights into guest complaints for informed decision making. Uh, Automates This also automates your review analysis, saving time and effort, allowing managers to focus on actually implementing the solutions. And we found that already this is one of the most popular dashboards used by our guest users in our higher tiers, at higher tiers meaning more properties uh, at, at one time. Uh, so this is something that they're getting a lot of value out of, and uh, it can just, like I said, help streamline these operations. All righty. Next up is Reply AI. This is our chat bot. Uh, so the guesty Reply AI can generate instant messages that are accurate, understand context from what the guest is actually saying to you, and are written in your specific voice that you have cultivated through your own messaging or through coaching the Reply AI. Uh, so better than kind of talking through all of this, I actually want to share a video with you guys uh, to uh, actually walk through the functionality so you can see it for yourselves how straightforward this tool is. Introducing Guesty Reply AI, a smart reply system that understands context, mirrors your unique style, and ensures consistent guest communication. Seamlessly woven into our unified inbox, Choose from ready-made replies or fine-tune one to perfection. Incoming messages can be translated for effortless, barrier-free communication. But there's more. Reply AI analyzes the sentiment of incoming messages, helping you gauge the mood and tone of your guest inquiries so you can reply accordingly. To start using, log in to Guesty. Click the inbox icon at the top. Pick a conversation. Press Reply AI in the reply box to opt in. Activate now and start using Guesty Reply AI for better and more efficient guest communication. If you want to learn more, feel free to continue browsing our help center. Thanks for watching. Amazing. So as you can see, fairly straightforward. Gives you a drafted message based on the guest response and you can take it from there. Uh, honestly, as a as a working professional that writes a lot of emails and also as a screenwriter, AI is something that really changes the way your brain works over time, where we're so used to as people just trying to think of exactly how to say something from the start. And you can kind of get writer's block when you're going to say, like, what is the exact message I'm trying to say? To be able to have an AI bot spit out at least 80% of the vibe that you're trying to get across and then just editing from there can take you from like 
15 minutes to write a message to literally 20 seconds, which is um, really, really powerful. And another one of the reasons why similar to GPO or Guessy Price Optimizer, the Reply AI bot, when it was initially launched in Guessy to test it out and add it to the inbox for people who kind of found it and discovered it and were interested, 92% of users who started using the Reply AI bot continue to use it thereafter. Um, so again, another one of those tools that I cannot recommend enough for you to check out. Uh, if you're curious, you can go to the Guesty website or the Guesty Help Center to learn a little bit more. All right. Now this one, the last piece here is a little bit in the weeds. So I will do my best to explain kind of a top level because it's talking about search engine optimization or SEO, which is a very kind of nebulous black box term that can be used to describe a lot of things. But in this instance, what I'm referring to is optimizing the actual coding and build of your direct booking website to play as well and effectively as possible with Google and other search algorithms so that you're ranking higher when people are searching for related keywords. Uh, so 25% of Guessy website users today are leveraging this embedded AI tool uh, that is going to make recommendations to create, improve existing copy to kind of play better with SEO. And what that means is effectively, if you're trying to say something and describe a listing and you know that you really want to highlight that it is close to the beach or that it is close to a significant, uh, you know, river <laughs> or something that that is like the selling point of the listing, you may come to this tool and it will give you keyword recommendations to say, hey, this is what we know searches best on Google when trying to talk about this kind of thing. So this is the literal verbiage that you should use to play better with that search algorithm. Uh, so rather than having to guess what's the best way to write these words to get it to show up on the algorithm, who better to ask than the algorithm themselves? Uh, so you can stress the tangible benefits for property managers. <clears throat> such as increased efficiency, better SEO, improved web presence, uh, and just overall not having to worry about those, those nitty gritty technical details that can make or break where you're ranking on search engines. Uh, so this is really all in all working to boost the number of direct bookings you have, which we love because there's no channel commission, and then build your brand overall to have a really strong website that it ranks highly because it looks good and because it's built uh, effectively. All right. Now, outside of the Guesty AI suite, we also have a whole multitude of partnerships um, with a, a wide range of companies that range anywhere from like fully AI based to starting to dip their toes in AI uh, to building specific suites similar to Guesty around that. Uh, one such of those marketplace partners is with us today, as I mentioned, which is uh, Francois from Enzo Connect. All righty. Francois, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to you if you want to share your screen. Perfect. So, um, hi, everyone. My name is Francois. Uh, pronounced my last name perfectly, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and um, I'm the co-founder of Enzo Connect. We are a guest experience platform, um, and I'll explain a bit more what we do. My background is in computational linguistics. So fun fact, I actually, one of my TAs in university is the CTO of Cohere, which is ChatGPT's biggest competitor. They just raised $450 million. I just discovered this like three days ago and I was like, wow. Um, so I worked on a lot of transformer models in university, challenged my professors on this paper that had come out in 2018, 2019, and what we know today as AI. So I'm going to kind of demystify AI, share a bit more what it is, what we do, uh, but also kind of where AI is headed in the industry. Um, because just like we were talking about cloud-based companies, uh, back in the days, we would say, oh, I'm a cloud company that does ABC. Today, you won't hear that anymore. Every company is in the cloud. But what you will hear is I'm an AI-based company. And in a few years, you won't hear that anymore because an AI-based company. So I just want to preface with that. Um, Enzo Connect, we are a guest experience, a guest management, and a guest communication platform. And our mission is really simple, digitize and monetize the guest experience. So we help increase revenue per guest, save you time, and generate more five-star bookings. But I'm not here to sell. I'm here to share more about the AI. So we're going to start with the three types of AI. You, you guys may have seen this in another presentation of mine at VRMA, Astro, a few other things. I really like to start it with this because if you haven't seen it, it's fun to kind of picture what AI is today. So there are three types of AI. 
Today, everyone talks about chat and GPT as if it was a new thing, but Keegan mentioned it perfectly. Dynamic pricing, revenue management, there is AI already involved and has been involved in some of your systems. You're just not aware of it. So the first one is narrow AI. It focuses on a single task and is constrained by constraints to not go beyond that. So think of it as IBM's supercomputer. It needs to win the chess game, and that is it. It's doing a bunch of calculations, figuring out what is the probability of winning and moving the pieces accordingly. It is narrow because you can't ask IBM's supercomputer to draft a copy for a blog post. It won't know how to do that, but it will win a chess game sometimes. The general AI, which is what we are all hyped up about this year, is performing a broad range of tasks by using that human-like cognition. So it sounds and feels like a human. It almost it feels like you're talking to a human, but the reality is it's not that smart. It doesn't reason. It doesn't think for itself. It's not going to connect the dots unless you tell it to, and you have to reprompt it quite often. And that's ChatGPT as we know it today. And then the last one, which is personally my favorite, but not everyone likes it, is super AI. And that is Terminator. That's the idea. It can now perform human intelligence. It's the idea that it's full reasoning. It's reasoning for you. So think of language as a part in your brain that translates all of your thoughts into something coherent. Super AI is doing all of that reasoning. Chat GPT is translating it. Um, so we don't have that yet. This is something you're going to see a lot of movement towards this. We're very far from this. It's um, Super AI is not is not there yet, so don't worry about Guesty becoming Terminator or Enzo Connect becoming Terminator. I don't think we're there yet, uh, unless it's on your roadmap. But I guess let, let your customers know, but uh, we'll stop there for that. So I want to talk about the Gartner's no comment, hype cycle. No comment no, on that. <laughs> <laughs> no comment, exactly. So I want to talk about Gartner's hype cycle because what we saw between April of last year and this year is exactly this curve. Last year, I mean, at Enzo Connect, we just launched, uh, similar to Replies AI, predictive messaging, and so on, Enzo AI with a few other capabilities, and we just saw this hype. Everyone was looking for, oh my God, is AI just going to replace my entire team and answer everything for me? And so we were at that wow factor that you see at the top of the curve. And then it started responding to a few of your guests. And a few examples I've gotten from, from tools in the industry that, you know, it's normal. They may have messed up on a few things is like a guest showing up at a property being like, hey, I'm here. And the AI responding, I'll be down in a jiffy. And like, no one's going to be down in a jiffy. And now you're telling the guest for an hour that you'll be down in a jiffy and he's getting pissed and he's booking a different property. So we're at that, wait a minute, damn it. It's not really working. I don't want AI. It's not going to work for me. I need humans. But the reality is, there is a useful component, as Guesty's demonstrated, as other marketplace partners have demonstrated, where AI plays a really impactful role. And we're going to focus a lot on general AI today. We're not going to talk too much about uh, narrow AI in the context of revenue management, dynamic pricing. These aren't things that I personally know very well, so I don't want to comment too much on those, which are more machine learning algorithms than, than general AI. Um, and I think the reason why we're in that is because it works sometimes. It doesn't work all the time. You need to prompt it well. So this is one of my favorite examples. How much is two plus five? Two plus five is seven. My wife says it's eight. Two plus five is actually seven. My wife is always right. I apologize. I must have made a mistake. So again, it's not reasoning. It is just translating what it knows and the data it gets. Uh, and let me know if I'm good on time, Keegan. Now, the reason why AI is headed in the right direction, if you look at data, as simple as that, and you look at data mining, cloud computing, big data, AI, and so on, you'll notice that there's kind of a pattern in terms of what's being done. So in the early 2004, it was all about data mining. Oh my God, you can actually get things from data. You can actually understand and predict things from data. So we're just dipping our toes in this. Then we're realizing, well, we have all this information, but we need to compute it way faster. We can't have huge server rooms racking up costs to process all this information. So cloud computing becomes the next wave. And then and that's where you hear everyone talking about cloud and we're in the cloud, we're a new software. And then we realize, well, wait a minute, we can process so much information so much faster, we can get even more data. Let's get big data. And so you heard a lot about big data in the late 2015, 2016, it started popping up. Well, the next wave is AI. And this is a, a quick model. I don't want to get too technical, but this is just shows you the largest publicly announced AI training runs by different companies. And what you can see is it just starts to go faster and faster and faster. So uh, Flop, which is you know looking at all of this data sets, how many data sets are we looking at? So it's 10 to the power of 18, 10 to the power of 20, 10 to the power of 26. 
it is massive and it's just going to keep growing from there. If any of you have invested in NVIDIA, there's a reason why it's been booming. It's because we need even more computing power to process all of this information. So just looking at where investments are happening globally, not just within vacation rental, this is a trend that is going to happen. This is a shift that is going to happen in your business that you will have to jump on. This is not NFTs. This is not an, a fad. This is happening. And you need to be aware of it. And you need to start thinking about how to structure your business to accommodate for all the AI tools that are going to benefit that you are going to be able to benefit from, but also that you're going to need to scale. So in the race to harness AI, a lot of companies is focused on moving quickly. We've done that. Guessy's done that. Pretty much any platform wants to move fast in the AI uh, vertical because it's the next stage of technology. But the real value lies not in the speed, but in the depth, quantity, and distinctiveness of your data. Something you have already in your custom fields, for example, in Guesty, uh, or just overall in the different tools that you're using. So it's the narrow and unique data sets that unlock AI's full potential. And I'll, I'll dive into that a bit more because I know it sounds technical, but I'm going to explain what narrow and unique means. So when I spoke to property managers, the key thing that they always wanted was, I just want a chat bot. Can you just respond to my guests for me? Can you just replace my team? Can you just do this for me? And the thing is, we're not there yet. Not a lot of companies are there yet. There's a few companies doing it in the industry, but I think the success rate is still low enough that the confidence threshold that you guys have doesn't match what you can actually do from a chatbot perspective. We're getting there, but you need to be aware of where it works well and where it doesn't. And this is where I go back to that unique and, and, and more restrained data set. It is about categories. So we did a quick assessment of different customers. And we actually made this a free report. Um, I was told to call it an audit, not a report. Apologies, marketing. Uh, but <laughs> it is basically, we will connect your guest the account and we will run a report on past guest messages, Airbnb, OTAs, SMS, emails, everything that you have in Guessy. And we'll get you a report on the types of categories. And then this is all super free. I'll give you guys a link at the end. You just need to connect it. If you want to disconnect your PMS at the end and delete all the data, we'll do that. We are GDPR compliant, PETA compliant and all that. Uh, but it gives you an idea of what kind of messages am I getting? Where should I be focusing my efforts? And what we learned, so this is a, a specific data set. We looked at 28,000 messages, 250, 2,521 listings analyzed, 11.2 uh, message per listing per week analyst. So we just looked at seven days, but we can do this for 30 days and so on. What we noticed was 20% of it were complaints, frustrations. 26% were other. So we just need to figure out what those categories are so we can get you more information about the other category. We just came up with a preset of categories. Check in, check out, kind of obvious. When am I going to get my check-in instructions? How am I going to check in? Verification questions. What is the safety deposit? I'm on Airbnb. I'm not doing safety deposits off platform, um, amenity questions, and so on. What this allows you to do is better understand where you should put your focus. And to, comp to complement this data set, what we did is we looked at, we looked at our AI and on a, on a beta set or a, a set of users that are or beta users in Enzo, we decided, okay, let's see if we were to respond to that message where would it be accurate? How much of it would they modify? So similar to Guessy's reply AI, we have a, a predicted response in our messaging that drafts a response for you based on the context, sentiment, and so on. But it'll also look at where the guest is in the verification stage. Because what we noticed was if a guest wasn't verified and a guest asked you about check-in instructions, the AI would prov provide the check-in instructions, but they're not verified yet. So it should first say, please get verified. Then I'll give you the check-in instructions. So looking at how people were modifying the AI allowed us to measure accuracy rates. And what we learned was complaints, very difficult to provide a response with AI because it's always unique. Check-in and check-out, pretty easy. It's pretty standard. I mean, there's no changing the information. There's one way of checking in and checking out. Positive feedback, transportation, special accommodations, and so on. So this allows you to feel more comfortable about what are the places that you would want to automate in your business further, what are the places that you want to focus human attention to and maybe provide guidelines to your staff on how to respond within your tone of voice and so on and segment workflows versus human touch. So not everything can be automated. And I know I say this as an AI you know, fan. I do think eventually we will get there. I think it's only a matter of time. And for those of you who are skeptics about it, I understand 
that why you would be skeptical. And this is information. This is data to grow together on and get that accuracy rate from 42 to 52 to 62. And, and we'll grow this over time. But there are certain areas in your business that you can confidently automate with basic workflows and AI. And, and please don't conflict, you know, if this, then that workflows with actual AI, because there are very different things. It's a transformer model. Send me a message after you want to learn how they all work, because I, I love these things. I can nerd out for ages. So uh, Xavier, if you didn't make it on the presentation, I, I like literally had an appendix ready to go on, on all of this. So <laughs> uh, good thing you made it. Um, so the main thing, if you are interested in this report, you can start getting actionable insights into your guests. Uh, the most pressing questions that you're getting, the comments, the feedback. Uh, and of course, this is free. Um, another thing that I would suggest doing, but it seems like Guesty actually does it automatically for you. So I'm just going to promote Guesty's tool here is the review thing. I was going to say copy paste all the reviews in chat GPT, but it turns out Guesty has a way more streamlined process than that. So feel free to check that out. And then think about how you make AI a process in your organization. Like think of how you structure information. Is it at a listing level, at a guest level? How you can share this information between systems. So as you grow, not just your tech stack, but your business, it's easy for that information uh, to be passed on. This is one thing Guesty does phenomenally well. If you're not a Guesty user, I mean, their API is, so thank you, API team of Guesty. Uh, and no, they're not paying me to say this, by the way. Um, <laughs> elevate the guest experience at scale by prioritizing communication areas with the highest impact. So think about rebuilding those workflows, basic conditional workflows. You do not need AI for everything. There are certain things that can just be, if this, then that, and again, a report on where those issues are happening can address that for you. And last but not least, a little self-promotion here, but you think about using a guest app, reduce the amount of questions that you're getting upsells, generate more review with upsells. Uh, to generate more revenue, not reviews, although reviews, why not? Um, generate more revenue with upsells and so on, verification, guidebooks, and et cetera. Um, and last but not least, what I addressed, organize that data strategically. Your PMS is the source of truth for all of your tech stack, but also think about Notion, ClickUp, other tools to have all of this information accessible with your team that you could then plug in uh, to Gasty, Enzo, and so on. So this is a bit about Enzo Connect. I'm putting up the link to the free AI report right here. I'm also going to share it in the chat so that you guys can uh, feel free to check it out. And if it's something that you want to try, all you need to do is connect your PMS account. Within 48 hours, we'll get your report on your messages analyzed. So that's a bit about AI. If you have any questions, I'm an email away. And uh, I'll pass it on to uh, Keegan and Xavier. Amazing. Thanks so much, Francois. Uh, that AI audit is really, really cool. I, I definitely want to see uh, if some customers check that out and, and see what the end product looks like. Uh, absolutely. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> Francois kind of set the, the scene really well here. I didn't even realize you had done your thesis on AI like that. That is crazy. <laughs> so, <laughs> even more so, thank you for coming today. Um, but now we want to get into the, the nuts and bolts of like, okay, so we talked about a little at the high level, what are different ways that we can use AI analyzing data going through? But I wanted uh, we wanted to bring a actual property manager and guesty customer to the webinar today to share what are just the specific examples of these applications that we're seeing today. Um, so I want to introduce uh, Xavier Cardenas here from Welcome Travel. And uh, Xavier is going to be walking us through kind of how his company has made decisions of exploring AI solutions versus, you know, in balance with their staff, and then also just different use cases of how they use it today. Uh, so without further ado, Xavier, if you want to go ahead and unmute yourself, uh, we'll, we're good to go. Okay, thanks so much, uh, Francois. Keegan, I think so you made an uh, amazing presentation. Uh, as I mentioned, Keegan, uh, I'm not in the IT world like uh, Gessie and like Enzo. I'm a property manager. We manage a portfolio around uh, 500 properties in, in Latin America. Uh, and I have a, a PhD in digital transformation uh, and also have a, a master in, in hospitality in Switzerland. And okay, I want to explain how optimize uh, your business and the efficiency using uh, AI tools. And I want to present how using our company uh, uh, AI. And um, first, uh, I, as I mentioned, Keegan, and also part of my uh, this, uh, dissertation of the, my PhD, is I think so the technology, they have uh, two sides. One is the technology, but the other is the human part. And it's, it's important to keep the balance between both. 
For example, I, I see many benefits uh, using uh, AI, for example, in terms of efficiency, for example, time, speed, uh, you have a team 24 a uh, seven uh, also the cost sometimes uh, you reduce costs uh, for example when you implement some tools we reduce the cost uh, the contact center because we start to reply and nowadays for example in in specific hours we don't schedule or we don't have a scheduled person uh, at that time because we start using uh, ai also i i see the um, the ai reduce the human error sometimes human Made mistakes uh, because there are, are Francis mentioned, no, no, like Terminator, but there are humans, uh, and but it's important to take time to learning a little bit how you use the AI and also how you train your your team to use that. Uh, as I mentioned, Keegan, I think so. It's, it's more easy, for example, in management position, but in operation position, it's more difficult than they understand, for example. Uh, how, for example, housekeeping people or maintenance, how you use uh, AI. But sometimes uh, the AI is, is, is this, uh, this is a hospitality world and people like to have empathy and human touch. And in some steps of the of the guest experience, they sometimes they like to interact with a person, not necessarily with a with a computer. Uh, for that reason, we need to keep that balance. Also, for example, as mentioned, Francois, uh, AI is really good, for example, for uh, uh, tasks that there are routines and that there are repeated many times. But for example, when there are something that is complex, for example, complaints, complaints always know is the same complaints. Uh, everybody have different issue. Maybe AI is not a good tool because it's, it's not solve complex problems. And also you need to evaluate sometimes also the cost because there are uh, some costs when you implement that or when you, uh, I don't know, to subscribe to a specific service or if you develop in South or you need to pay, for example, for Amazon Web Service, something like that. And this is this is a, a cause of, of that. Uh, okay. And I want to mention uh, how in, in Welcome uh, we use uh, AI in different steps of the, of the journey with the guests in the pre-arrival, during the stay, and post checkout, and I want to explain, and maybe I mentioned some examples of how we, we use in our company. For example, in the pre-arrival, we use AI for listing creation. For example, in the property description, uh, we we identify that I know in in the before was a person that have creativity to write the description of the profiles in in different uh, OTAs. But we discovered that using AI, the description is better. And also, for example, uh, use uh, AI, for example, for improve the, the quality of the, of the pictures. And in our company, we, we, we provide a guest book of each of the properties. And for example, uh, we start use open AI uh, to create that books and to create the text of that books. Or, and also in that book, we, we recommend some of the restaurants and some of the entertainment near to the property and we use AI to create that before was a person to do that and nowadays we are more efficient and it's only 10 minutes to create a, a that and last time was a two hours three hours of a person and you mentioned Keegan more people uh, use AI for pricing uh, for example for creating a Pricing and revenue management. Uh, we use, for example, uh, different. Uh, for example, we start using Automizer. Automizer is uh, a company that provide a revenue management solution, but also we use a Price Lab, and we 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 use in that way. Also for a uh, guest communication previous to the arrival, we have the amazing tool that you mentioned, Keegan of uh, Guesty. Uh, we we. We provide that to the customer support. When a person asks something, we uh, click to the button of Guesty and we start to use uh, AI. And re it's really good. I really recommend that. Uh, and also, for example, in the security, for example, uh, we use uh, also some platform we, to verify the ID and authentication. And it's better to verify the authentication uh, you use IA than the human. For example, uh, we we compare the ID, for example, with a with a picture of the of the person, 
Also, we use, for example, a for reply to the smart logs to generate the, the codes of the smart logs. And if they, they have some problems with the smart, we use AI to solve that problems. Uh, also, we use uh, AI, for example, for uh, operation, for a schedule, the cleaning or the housekeeper, the maintenance. Uh, as you mentioned, for example, we, we use another tool also to uh, analyze all of the reviews. And after they analyze the reviews, they show uh, what are the main issues regarding with the maintenance, also for personalization of the of the gaze. And uh, we use also for upselling and, and cross-selling. And I will mention, for example, uh, yeah, already I mentioned three examples. One is the listing creation. It's really good. I recommend, for example, Price Lab have one of that. Oh, you have the option as well to use uh, maybe open uh, uh, AI tools to create the, the listing. Also to the guest communication, uh, we we reduce the, the time of, of replies uh, because before it was around uh, between six to eight minutes. Now it's, it's immediately. And also we have the, the option to upsell. For example, we, uh, before arrive the, the guests, we 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 are available the property. We um, invite the, the guests to stay longer and we offer auto, uh, automatic we uh, AI a specific a specific right and also as I mentioned here for example I take some picture of Enzo <laughs> uh, Enzo is a really good uh, tool also we have uh, for example for security for the smart uh, locks for example uh, when okay people don't know how to use the smart locks uh, and it's really good uh, to, uh, I recommend also and so and now I want to mention during the stay during, during the stay for example we offer e-concerts is sometimes uh, our properties there are no person in or staff in the building uh, but person asks about transportation and also asks about restaurants and for example also a message of automation when the person is inside of the property that has some problems to maybe don't know how to use a specific uh, tool in the in the property. Also, uh, we use, for example, for uh, cross selling. It's not only I think so. There are many research that show that uh, more of the property of managers they may are around twenty percent. Not only in the accommodation, but in in extra in extra selling points. And there's really good. To do that, uh, also I recommend, uh, for example, for real time control, in Internet of Things. For example, we we are working very close with Minute. Minute is for noise uh, control, and we try to connect uh, Minute with tools like Enzo. And we, if there are some problems on noisy, AI reply automatic, and they send the messages automatic to the to the guests. Uh, also, for example. In some of the properties, depend on the property, we the owner implement or IoT, for example, for control uh, temperature is a really good tool. Uh, and as, as I mentioned, as example here, for example, they have the the noisy one. Also, this is a image of Enzo. <laughs> uh, here uh, you have automatic, for example, they set the the message if the person or the guest uh, don't. They have to make noisy, and also, for example, in Enzo, we have the option to use, uh, for example, to schedule transportation, restaurant uh, updates, or upselling is a really good tool uh, to use uh, AI. And now I will continue with the AI post checkout. For example, we use for reviews, analysis, automation. In, in, in the past, I remember when I was using the business analytics of uh, Guesty, we, we spent a lot of time uh, review by review. Nowadays, we consolidate everything and it's easy to have the, the meeting because we consolidate, okay, this is regarding with cleaning, this is regarding with, uh, for example, with maintenance, this is regarding for with communication, and it's easy for us to uh, manage that. Also, for example, uh, as I mentioned, when we use AI to analyze the reviews, we we identify a, a specific areas of maintenance that they need the, the property. Also, for example, for damage and, and claims. Uh, for example, we we use sometimes more than AI. For example, we use is automatizations of that. 
Also for revenue management, as, as I mentioned, to how to define the specific rate, and also for property improvements. Uh, as, as I mentioned, for example, we use more, this is more than AI, this is uh, automation, for example, for damage claim. Um, for example, they also and so have this tool is really uh, good. And it's something that, I don't know, in the in the past, I remember that was a person only focused in uh, if there are some damage to charge to the to the guest. Now this is automatic and you have the, the option to put, okay, 24 hours before the checkout, 36 hours before the checkout, and this is uh, the ways that we use. And okay, I went planning to conclude because I think so is uh, on time. Uh, my conclusion and recommendation is uh, AI improved the efficiency. Really, is I don't want to say that AI replaces humans, but humans start focus more in analytics in your strategy. Is not replace the, the humans. Also, it's important to keep the balance between AI and humans. But AI requires time training and sales making for guests, employees, and also uh, we require good data. Also, it's important when you decide to implement AI to evaluate each project and evaluate the return on investment. As, as I mentioned, is the return on investment sometimes is not immediately. You need to take some time, maybe one, two months, or three months, to see uh, the, the results. Uh, also, uh, I discovered that if you don't have really good data, it's too difficult to do uh, a really good uh, AI, and maybe you start to make some mistakes. And uh, I see, for example, I attend many conferences, I scale up, uh, Berma, okay, Expo Host, uh, in Mexico also I attend, and there are many suppliers, amazing like Guesty, amazing like Enzo, but I think so, I see some property uh, managers on, on some property companies that decide to buy only technology, but they don't have a strategy behind. And this, I call that fashionista because, okay, they say, okay, this is really good tool. I uh, I, I was attend a, a webinar and they say, they, I, I need to implement, but they don't have a strategy behind. And if you don't have a strategy behind, sometimes uh, the team doesn't work. And uh, AI applied for some segments. For example, we have some really luxury uh, properties. And in luxury properties, uh, we prefer to have more humans because I think so that the ticket is, is expensive per night, it's around uh, 1,000, and, and the person is uh, for the amount of money that they pay, they prefer to have a, 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 car, a kind of a person, no uh, uh, automatic system. But for example, in middle scale budget, uh, we use more uh, AI tools. Okay, thanks so much for for that uh, and for the for the time, Keegan and Francois. Of course, thank you so much, Xavier. I really appreciate you giving the property management side of things here uh, and and giving us the specific examples. I really liked how you focused in on the strategy component of utilizing AI tools uh, versus the fashionista of just trying to find the quick, easy solution. Uh, it kind of it made my brain bounce back to Francois's. Uh, graph that he showed back in 2004, starting with data mining and how then cloud uh, cloud storage became more of a thing. Really what's been happening is we've just been building the tools and building blocks we've needed all along to allow AI to do the data analysis that humans don't want to do or don't have time to do, right? So now you have the data mining capabilities to get all that rich data from these customer messages, from these custom fields that you have in the system. You don't have to pay for storage because it's in the cloud. So you're good. You're good on environmental, I guess, if that's the, the concern there. And then you now have the processing power and you now have the processing ability as well. Uh, I've seen some people utilize AI tools to even say like, here's a data set. Can you give me findings from this? Like, can you interpret this data for me? It's not going to be perfect every percent of the time. But what I found is like any interaction I have with AI, it's okay if it doesn't get it 100%. As long as it's moving me forward and helping me think the thing through more, there's value added from that because otherwise my brain is the one that's doing that thinking and he is tired <laughs> these days. All right. So we've got a couple minutes here just for one or two questions. Um, so I wanted to to start with Xavier here uh, on and and then kind of get Francois's take on this as well. But uh, Francois, obviously, with your background ac academically in AI, I think it's a little bit different. But Xavier is kind of 
like me, uh, a average person, right? When it when it comes to technology, uh, this can be this can be um, overwhelming. I think when when coming into it, right? If you're a property manager, you were building your business, you started really getting a hold of it, and now all of a sudden we're in this hyper accelerated environment that requires this level of tooling and technology. Uh, can you talk about some of the biggest uh, challenges or limitations? that you faced with your team members or even like your decision makers at your company when it came to the uh, birth of AI or like the, the thrusting of AI into the spotlight that's happened lately. Okay. I mean, I so, oh, okay. okay. Let's start no, with sorry, Xavier ahead, and then, yeah, this and then is, we'll yeah, jump yeah, to this. Yeah, this is a Xavier question. My bad. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think so one of the biggest challenges is uh, the person start thinking that you want to replace the, the position or, or uh, what person, for example, I don't know. I was remember when I implement a price lab, I remember my team of revenue managers say, okay, maybe Xavier uh, decided to you know, fire <laughs> all of the team. And now yeah, they yeah. continue working, uh, but they are working more in the strategy and analyzing the, the data and not spend, I don't know, 80% of the time to only collect the data and process the data. Now it's eighty. Uh, so they actually they actually probably like analysis. it more. They like it more than they thought they would. Like they went from being afraid it was going to take their job to realizing, oh, I don't need to do this this manual work anymore that the tool is doing for me. I can strategize and analyze, which is much more fun. Yes, and the other, for example, I was remember the customer uh, support and also the customer support. At the beginning, they don't trust too much in the in the AI. Uh, because they say, okay, maybe the, the reply is not correct and they prefer writing. Uh, but nowadays, uh, you need time to do that and in the process. And the, for me, uh, uh, this is part of my, my dissertation is you need to make sense of people. It, it don't make sense for the people if you try to implement you know, like no strategy and not combines uh, the other person. I think it doesn't work. This is one of the challenges that, that I face also. When sometimes I, I need to present that project with the investors and yeah. investors, sometimes though they want to see the return investment immediately, and you need to mention that this take sometimes to to show the results. Essentially, that hype curve that that uh, Francois walked us through, uh, absolutely. Francois, any comments on that on your end? I was just going to add, you know, what it's. It, AI is part of our DNA at Enzo. I mean, we started this way. I'd written a sentiment analysis um, algorithm three years ago, which we ended up switching to OpenAI because it was less costly. So I guess I guess my algorithm wasn't as good, um, realistically. But no, the main thing I was just going to point out was um, I actually tell people on my team, if you automate your job, you're promoted. And, and it, it switches the conversation from, I want you to replace your job with technology. And if you do that, you are promoted. Wow. Because now That's they're a great thinking way to about how do I build, how do I make my job more? And this comes with onboarding support, engineering, marketing, et cetera. It gets everyone to think more. How do I get this company to be more efficient? But that's it a little parenthesis that, on that. Yeah, it turns that little fear-based mentality that I feel like we that's as right. employees in the system that we work in have, especially in the United States, right? And like you don't, you're yeah. you're worried about getting replaced, but it actually incentivizes strategic thinking instead of just that's like right. trying to keep your head down and not ruffle feathers. Um, Francois. How do you see AI impacting the short-term rental industry moving forward? And what tools do you think would be developed in the next five years? What's like a, a what's your craziest idea you can think of? I'm going to address actually, to answer this question, one of the questions in the Q&A from Mr. Anonymous attendee about <laughs> voice AI, because nice. I, I am a big, 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 big believer that we are going to move into that segment. Now, it's going to go through a phase of a lot of issues. It's, you know, we're going to get spam calls, phone calls from, you know, bots. And this is already happening. You don't even know. You may have been speaking to a, a, a sales rep about a, a certain software. They cold called you and turns out it was an AI bot that was speaking with you. You don't even know. So it's going to be, I want to say dangerous in the sense that it can lead to fraud and, and certain issues. But I think we're moving towards that, um, you know, communication being assisted, being automated for especially customer service. I mean, in, across all industries, 
I think image recognition is also an area of AI that we're going to see huge improvements. I saw we were talking about this yesterday, Keegan, about um, um, in uh, in uh, not hospitality in healthcare, uh, where mm. someone had uh, an AI had detected breast cancer before a doctor could, saving lives right there. So I think you know we're looking at AI today. We think ChatGPT. We think blog posts and chatbots. But it goes way beyond that. It goes into translating um, complex things into easier things. And that, that's how I would simplify it. So nice. I need to nice. write you know, an engineering thing and I'm, I can write it quicker. I can write a little app faster. I can um, you know, recognize breast cancer faster than doctors will. Yeah. So we're going to see it cross-functional. Um, I think right now it's language. The next is voice. The next is image and video. Um, and the 10 year roadmap of AI, and this is potentially a bit scary. And I think you'll see a lot of billionaires, the Elon Musks of the world starting to try and dominate these verticals is reasoning. Yep. Whoever wins in reasoning oh, is wow. going to be displacing the Google's apples and whatever of the world, because yeah. right now AI translates, it doesn't think the moment AI can think that's, uh, yeah, I'm getting a cabin in the woods. Um, <laughs> but that's uh, interesting. it's going to be awesome. I did. I'm not yeah. sure if you saw this. Uh, and then Xavier, I apologize. I think we got to wrap up for time here. But um, I saw recently that someone had utilized AI to process the video game Doom from the 80s frame by frame representing the experience rather than having a game image or a game engine rather. So it kind of redefined entirely how you were even looking at the problem of how do I make this game that people can play? Uh, so there may be even ways further on that we can't even comprehend because we understand things to be the way that they were built today, like the internet, for example. What does the internet look like if it was built by artificial intelligence versus humans, right? tech startups what does tech look like if it's built by ai or assistance with ai making sure that you're not deploying bugs when you're releasing new features things like that um, so i mean i'll just make one comment five-year plan simple your entire guest experience is automated and this whole conversation of we need human balance that's no longer a, a question phone calls are answered automatically uh messages are responded to we have a, an accuracy level that's high and you're handling owner acquisition, growing your business, and personalizing further the guest experience. We'll see. I'll see you guys in five years. Hopefully we'll I'm see, right. yeah. Um, but <laughs> Amazing. All right. Well, thank you, Francois. Thank you, Xavier. Thank you, everyone in the audience. Uh, we really appreciate it. We'll be sending through a recording of their presentation, and we'll chase up all of these uh, leads that we didn't have a chance to address during the presentation. But thank you so much, and have a great day. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.